my husband, the man I was supposed to spend the rest of my days with, well, he ditched me. He left me for someone nearly 13 years younger than him, and the whole reason is he's telling everybody I can't produce him an heir. Apparently, I can't have a baby. Well, you know what? I just thought, even without that, maybe we could adopt a baby, look into other type of treatments, but no. The love of my life just up and left me, and there's a little secret I just found out. I've never felt so useless in my life before. I never thought I would feel so hopeless. Imagine having everything that you could ever want in this lifetime, but being denied the gift of having a child. As if that's not enough, imagine having your husband and family blame you for not being able to have kids. You're lucky that you just have to imagine it. This is the reality that I have to live with because four years of marriage are down the drain just like that. How could I mean so little to someone who once promised me the world? I just don't understand and yet I'm expected not to stand in Chris's way when he wants to marry someone younger. As for my family, they're not helping, they're blaming me for not getting married soon enough and also procrastinating on having kids because I wanted to advance a bit further in my career. Maybe they would rather I stop working and allow my husband to support us. He only has a promotion this year, which allows him to take care of all the expenses, right? Well, as soon as he got the promotion, I told him that I was more than ready to have kids. I could rest easy now, knowing that he would not struggle so financially. So, we tried having a baby, but we failed, and we tried every remedy possible, but to no avail. He suggested that I go to the doctor to get checked, and the doctor said that I was healthy enough to have a baby. Maybe my age, since I'm 34, might have something to do with it. Well, Chris went and told my parents this without consulting me first. That led to my mother calling me to scold me, and she told me that I should have listened to her when she told me to start having kids. She told me that now it was going to be a lot harder for me to because of my selfishness. She did not want to hear anything from me, even if I wanted to explain. She told me that she simply did not raise me like that. She then ended the call by calling me a bad wife, which made me feel absolutely horrible. Terrible, even. I could not stop crying after that call, and I had no idea that I was about to cry some more. My husband became more distant from me within the coming weeks, and he only talked to me when he needed something. Otherwise, he acted like I wasn't present. He kept on talking about how nice it would have a child running around and giving me all these resentful looks as if I'm the one that caused all this. I felt deeply ashamed of myself and hated myself, but I didn't know why. I'd simply been logical. I mean, why were they all crucifying me as if I had made a big mistake? Ah... Either way, I knew that this could not go on for far too long. I simply needed uh, some sort of plan. So, I looked into IVF as well as even adoption. And I gathered as much information as I could. And then I presented it to my husband and I expected him to at least consider these options. But he was very dismissive and he told me that he felt very insulted by my bringing up these as solutions. People would think that he was shooting blanks when it was all my fault. I tried to reason with him, but he told me that he did not want to hear my excuses. Over the next couple of days, he made comments about my lifestyle and how it was causing me to be infertile. He commented about everything from the food I ate to my clothes and my medication. He told me to cut down on all of that because it was probably what was causing me to not conceive. I made some changes to my food and dressing, but not my medication. I needed certain medication for when I was sick to also prevent the sickness. If I stopped taking it, well, I would be left weak and absolutely vulnerable. I tried to explain it to Chris, but he didn't want to hear it. That's when I snapped and told him that maybe his drinking and smoking were preventing us from conceiving. He then told me not to be ridiculous. He told me about all his friends who had the same habits as him who still have plenty of kids. He then asked me why I was the only one of my friends without children. He told me that clearly it meant I was infertile and he was just wasting his life with me. So then I asked him if he was trying to say that four years was a waste and he said yes. Well, I simply could not deal with him anymore. I couldn't. So I left the room and started to do something else and later that night I was on the verge of falling asleep when he came into the room and started speaking. At first, I heard him from afar and thought I was dreaming. 
But after a while, I realized that he was talking to me, so I woke up. I woke up to him saying that he felt that we needed to separate because Amy could give him what I would not. Well, I was obviously confused as to who the heck Amy was. I asked him and he just told me that he had just told me that he was having an affair. All of my sleepiness disappeared and it was replaced by absolute shock. I asked him to repeat himself and what he said, and he did. He did not stop there. He told me that he's been thinking and that he wanted to just leave me. He wanted to get married to Amy, who was much younger and more fertile, and he really wanted to have kids. And I asked how old is his girlfriend, and he told me that she was 23 years of age. He's 37, and at this point I started to laugh. He asked me why am I laughing, and I told him to get the hell out of my room. I could not sleep all night. Everything just made sense. Now I understood why he was not affectionate with me anymore. All of it was going towards his future little wife, and I've never hated Chris before, but at this moment, I did. I wished him a lot of bad things. I mean, how could he just throw away four years of marriage? What followed was him moving out and me dealing with my family's critique. They were not happy with me and felt as if I should have done more to keep him. Nothing I could have done would have kept him from cheating. He had already wanted to cheat and be with that Amy of his. He just used my not having kids as an absolute excuse. They were just all buying it because that was what they wanted to believe. I say the divorce went by very quickly. We did not have any shared assets together besides the house and we decided to sell it and split the profit from it. I then got myself an apartment closer to my job. The only upside to this was that I no longer had to commute 40 minutes to get to work every day. I've tried my hardest to move on, but it's not easy. I've just seen their wedding announcement and my heart is heavy. The ink has not even dried on our divorce papers yet, and he's going to marry Amy? It's like he could not wait to get rid of me, the old, unattractive wife. This is what I am. Old, expired, and anything else that signifies someone who can be discarded. My own family has treated me like that, and I knew it was bad when my mom tried to get me to marry someone, well, you know, a widower with three kids. She said that this was the only type of man who would accept me, and I told her the last thing I wanted was to get into another relationship. What I wanted to do right now is just heal from losing someone that I love. I want to stop having a panic attack every time I see him in town with other women. I want to be able to get my family gatherings and not have people looking at me in pity, and I don't know, is it too much for me to ask? I just need to find a way to move on and get back to loving myself. I want these tears to dry so that I never have to just cry for that man again. But guys, I simply do not know what to do. Or how. How does one rebuild themselves after taking such a knock? Let me know. I'll update you. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is OP did come back for an update. Matter of fact, OP came back for five updates. However, the sad news is the first update was really, really delayed. It came out a year later, and I managed to find it. Here it is, update number one, one year later, and please, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Update number one. Wow, I can't believe that a year's actually passed since Chris got married to someone else. I wish I could go back in the past and tell myself that I was going to be alright. Truth be told, I was a mess. I was falling apart at the seams and barely able to perform daily activities, but slowly I started to feel better. I started to leave the house more and join different clubs over the weekend. It was a trip for someone in the comment section, and I wanted to thank that person. Well, doing that really helped me to keep my mind off him. I also started to appreciate the small things about myself. I decided that I was going to love myself, and I was not damaged or broken just because I could not have kids. I would find ways to fill my life with happiness. I would also not surround myself with any negative energy, you know, like my parents. It's amazing what distancing yourself from negative influences does and helps me feel so much better about myself and less insecure. And would you imagine it, I met someone. Well, let me tell you about Dane. I met Dane during a hike and he was super friendly and helpful to everyone who was new to it. We started talking and had a natural conversation. 
and he asked if I would be able to join him again sometime. I agreed and asked for his number. I saw him a couple of more times until one day he just straight up asked me out. At first, I made an excuse, feeling it's far too soon for me to start dating. However, when I told my friends this, they told me that I made such a dumb decision. I was not too quick, and I deserved happiness as well. Besides, Chris had already remarried, and they told me that they would not sit around and allow me to die alone, while Chris is out there just living his best life. So, I hit up Dane and agreed to go for a little coffee. When we went on several more dates, the relationship flowed naturally, with very few obstacles in the way, and he had a good job, good values, and was a hard worker like me. He was 38 years of age and has never been married, but had a 10-year-old son who lived with his mom. So, when he told me that he had a kid, I was suddenly reminded of what my marriage ended for. Even though I knew that I could possibly lose him, I decided I'm going to tell him the truth. To my surprise, he was unfazed by me being infertile. He just straight up told me that he just really wanted to be with me. We could adopt in the future if we really, you know, wanted that. But it was not a deal breaker at all. It scared me a bit that he spoke about the future so openly. I kept on expecting him to wake up one day and realize what a big mistake he made, but he didn't. He continued to be a loving and supportive boyfriend for over a year, and from his track record as a boyfriend, I just know that he's going to be a good husband. I can just see it in the way that he cares about me, supports me, and even encourages me. I also see it in the way that he's very responsible. Chris always had a nonchalant take on life. He's always left me to plan everything. Well, Dane is the opposite. Dane always thinks ahead and always has a game plan. When he asked me to marry him, he told me that all his life he had decided that he was not going to get married. He never even met anyone with whom it felt right. Every time things would get a bit serious, he would just run away. You know, with me, he didn't really feel like that. Didn't have that fear at all. Well, he felt like he was home and he was absolutely safe. So, no, uh, he wanted me to be his wife so that we could start to build our lives together. He told me that he was so glad that he waited, for I was the best person for him. You best believe I cried ugly tears when he said that, because of course I said yes to marrying him. The second time is a charm, isn't that what they say? Well, anyways, I'll update you. Update number two. This one is four months later. So, things have been a bit of a whirlwind and a lot's happened. Like the fact that I married him. That's right. We woke up one day and decided to just go to the court and sign the married papers. I've been complaining that I had to meet with the planners and finalize so many things. He then just asked me if a big wedding was even that important. Well, I said, uh, no. Then he told me, okay, get dressed in my finest outfit. Well, I asked him where we're going, and he smiled and told me that we're getting married. Of course, I didn't think twice. I ran, and I took everything that I needed and married the love of my life. It was the best decision I've ever made, and no, if you're asking, I do not regret it. It was just the beginning of the beautiful days that I was about to have with him. Married life has been treating us well, and we're already house hunting. We're going to get something small with only two bedrooms. One for us and one for his son, and when he visits, I don't expect my family to visit anytime soon. They're still angry at me for not having a big wedding, and honestly, I don't care. I don't live with them. As someone in the comments said, it's okay for me to choose my own happiness. I've been through enough, and they have not supported me in my healing journey. They've just acted as if nothing happened, and that frustrates me to no end. I'm not going to allow their judgment and bad energy to absolutely ruin this for me. Well, guys, this brings me to another point. How quickly I agreed to get married. Some of you were quite concerned about my rushing into this without doing the work that was required of me. I understand your concern, and I'm thankful. I didn't take it to heart as I knew that it was coming from a place of concern. I especially paid attention to somebody who said that I should make sure that I know the person that I'm getting married to. Especially since he has a son with another woman. Well, I agree with you when it comes to that, and while I have already met his son, I've not met the mother of his child, and I think that I should do that soon. I'll bring it up to him, uh, maybe later tonight. I think that's important for her to know the woman who's going to be a part of her life. Well, other than that, I feel pretty happy and confident that all of this is going to work out. 
The fact that he doesn't care that I can't naturally give him kids is just the cherry on top. Now, I'm so glad that Chris let me, uh, otherwise I would have never met my kind and caring hubby. Update number three, this one's only three weeks later. I've just recovered from the biggest shock of my life. And I'm still not certain that I'm not dreaming because it can't be. There truly is some good in this world. After all, my life has only improved since the last time I updated you guys. I'm so excited I can barely contain it, so let me just go ahead and spill the beans. Guys, I'm pregnant. Ugh. Well, I found out a couple of days ago when I went to the doctor. I have not been feeling well for several days, and I wanted to heal naturally, but Dane would not let me. He forced me to go to the doctor, and they did a routine pregnancy test, and I told myself that it was not pregnancy. It had to be something else, and not long after they took my sample, they called me back on the phone and told me the good news. He told me that I was three months pregnant, and that is crazy because I did not show any signs of gaining weight. I look just the same as I've always looked, and my pregnancy symptoms have also only started in the past couple of weeks. I blew it off as a bug, but it turns out I was pregnant. I could not believe what the doctor said. After all, I was told that I was infertile. So I told him that there's no way then we had to do another test. So he told me that he would do a blood test just to confirm, and he took my sample. When I went home, I dared not to tell my husband what I found out before it was actually confirmed. I could not sit still as I imagined what my life would be like if I was pregnant. Had fate really been the merciful toward me? It had to be a cruel joke. I had believed that there's no way I could be a mother for so long that I can't accept it. Now, there was a chance that I've been wrong and I was not sure how to deal with it. Days later, I get a call that my results were ready. They confirmed the pregnancy test, and I was overjoyed. I could not contain my joy and shock, and I had to tell my husband immediately. Since I was already done with my work for the day, I went home. I usually stay at work for an extra hour just to prep for the coming days, but I did not do that. Instead, I went home and cooked him all his favorite meals. It took me hours, but I was satisfied with the end result. He arrived home some hours later, and he was pleasantly surprised. He asked me what the special occasion was, and I just told him that we were celebrating something big. But I would tell him before dessert, so... We had a meal, and afterward, I went to bring out the dessert. When I came back, I had a cake, and he asked me if it was his birthday, and I just laughed. It was not a strange question, because he was selfless enough to forget his own birthday. I laughed and just told him to read what was written on the cake. Uh, you're going to be a father... The next thing I knew, I was up in the air because he was screaming with joy as he turned me around and around, and I laughed as he did this, full of joy. After he set me down, he just looked at me with wonder in his eyes. He told me that it was a miracle, and I agreed. No, well, this is a miracle. Something that has made me so happy, now our family is going to be complete. Well, it's a good thing that we have not bought the house yet because we're going to need more room now. Update number four, one month later. You would not believe whom I spoke to today, the one and only Chris. I'm the one he called because I was curious about a rumor that I heard. Even though we stayed in the same town, I've not seen nor spoken to him in months. We do not run into the same circles, so I stay at the edge of town where there's no opportunity for us to run into each other. I've also not asked him about him or looked into his socials in ages. As soon as we got divorced, I blocked him everywhere, and we've not even looked back since. I wanted to save myself the heartbreak of watching him move on with his life. I've all but forgotten about his existence, and my focus has been on growing my family. However, I came to find out that he and his wife have been struggling to conceive their entire marriage. Well, I found this out from a friend of mine who bumped into him and his wife at the hospital. She overheard the two of them arguing about what could be preventing them from having children. Amy told him that he too needed to get tested because she was still young and fertile. As soon as she got a chance, my friend told me that, well, what she heard. We both made the conclusion at the same time, and I was never the one with the fertility problem. It was him. It was laughable. I mean, he blamed me for his entire problems and left me only for me to meet the love of my life and fall pregnant. That was truly the blessing in disguise, and I'm glad that he left, guys. 
When I got home, I dialed up his number, and I was not sure what I was going to say to him, but I knew I needed to speak. I was finally ready to talk to him, and when I greeted him, he guessed what it was right away. He then said that he was shocked to hear my voice, and was my marriage not treating me well? I told him that my husband and I are doing great. So he asked me, okay, well, why did I need to talk to him then? Because there's nothing that tied us together anymore, and I told him that I need to tell him something. Okay. So he asked what I could have to say, and then mockingly asked if I was still in love with him. So then I just blurted it out because I was mad, and I told him, no, I'm pregnant with twins. Yeah, twins. We found out not so long ago, and when we had a scan, and our joy doubled upon finding out that we were getting double blessings. I waited for him to respond after I broke the news, but he was silent. So silent, in fact, he then asked me to repeat what I just said, so I said it again. Twins, baby. I let him know that my husband and I are expecting. Therefore, I was never infertile. I then told him that maybe he had been the problem all along and he just blamed me. He starts to stutter as the shock overcame him. He couldn't believe me, and he kept on asking how much. How could it be such a thing impossible? I laughed a little bit and told him that life was truly strange, was it not? Then I hung up that darn phone. I felt a little bit of satisfaction, you know, in being the one to break the news to him, and after that, I did not think about him again. There was not really a malicious intent behind my call. I just wanted to let him know that he had been wrong, and with that accomplished, I deleted his number and went on with my life. I would not think of this as revenge. Just correcting a person who was wrong, and now it's time for me to focus on making sure that I have a healthy pregnancy. I'll update ya. Update number five. Two months later. I've just had the most peculiar visit. Guys, I'm still reeling as I'm trying to figure out where this person got the nerve to approach me. Recently, I was at work when I was told that I had a visit from Amy. There was only one Amy that I knew, and that was Chris's young wife. I told them not to let her in. I had nothing to say to her, and she's never contacted me to apologize for what she did to my marriage. That home wrecker. She's acted like I did not exist for as long as I've known her. I mean, what could she want now? Try to cry to me after finding out that her husband can't have babies? I have no sympathy for a woman who is okay with hurting another woman. I told them not to let her into my office ever. I should have known that she would be so relentless. She somehow got my number and started to text me. She asked if she could meet me and she had something very important to discuss. I told her that I had nothing to say to her and that she should just leave me alone. She was in my past and needs to stay in the past. She told me that she really needed my help and literally begged to see me. So I told my husband what was going on and he said that maybe I should see her. He did not trust her, so he asked to be present when I met with her. A couple of days later, Amy came to our house and once we had gotten all of the pleasantries out of the way, she told us why she was there. She said that the one thing she really wanted to have in her life was kids. She thought that I was infertile and that was my husband just left me for. But she had recently come to find out that I can have children. She did the math and figured out that Chris was the one who had the problem. So she had a request to make. A request? A request? Uh, I told her, okay, well go ahead. And she dropped a bomb on us. She said that when she confronted Chris, he told her about my twins. She wanted to leave him, but could not because she depended on him. So she needed to figure out a way to make her marriage work, so she came to me and asked if I would be willing to help her. I was confused as to how that's even possible. Well, then she opened up her big old mouth to make such a ridiculous request. She wanted to know if I could consider giving her one of the twins. Uh, what? I thought that I didn't hear her correctly, so I cleaned out my ears, but she wanted one of my twins. I got up. I took her hand and started to drag her to the door. She begged me to listen, and she didn't mean to offend me, but she had done a lot more than offend me. She had said something so disgusting. Why would I give up my own flesh and blood to a person who brought me so much pain? I asked her what she was smoking, because she had better stop. I was so angry that I was too close to getting physical with her. My husband managed to calm me down and spoke to her, and he told her that he understood that she was hurt and desperate. But this was a ridiculous request to make, and he then asked her to do us a favor and never contact us again. 
If she didn't, then there was going to have a call to the cops on her. He then, uh, well, told her that if anything happened to me or the babies, she would be the first suspect. He could make her life very difficult if she tried to mess with the family. She then said that she thought to come to me as a woman. She hoped that there was a chance I could agree, and I told her to get the hell out of here and never contact me again. After she left, my husband called Chris and told him to keep his wife on a leash. Chris acted like he didn't know what she did, but he was clearly a liar. You best believe that we're going to be extra careful now. Update 6, final update, mini update, six months later. It's been six months. I just wanted to let you all know I'm doing good. We finally bought a house that was big enough for the two of us, and I finally had the twins. Well, they're a lot of work. And I mean that. But we love them. We've not heard from Amy and Chris in a while, and if the rumors are true, then Amy left him. And they're in the process of a separation. I have no idea if it's true, and I'm not really interested in finding out. All I care about is his leading a happy life with my family. What I've learned from this is that sometimes you lose something because something better is on the way. You don't go through hardships for nothing, and there's always a light at the end of the tunnel.